today I want to explore humility. Last week um, I touched on and we explored in a meditative inquiry a doorway into presence. And the doorway that I described uh, in that video really has to do with the manner with which we enter uh, any given moment. So it's the attitude or the how um, of our own consciousness um, that enters any given moment that then allows this presence, this divine presence to be apparent in our experience. So instead of waiting for presence to come, instead of um, trying to will presence to come in or uh, being upset when we don't find it or feel it, instead um, recognizing that actually how we enter any given moment, how we approach, how we come into the space, or may it be the meditative space, so in our meditation, or it could be even in our daily lives. So how we come into that space, whatever it may be, will determine our experience, right? So it's this kind of recognition that uh, it's not about what I can get from any given moment. A lot of the times when we come into spirituality, when we come to meditation, when we come uh, and open to different states of our being and consciousness and we feel connected, that a lot of the times then we'll orient around like what can spirit do for me? What can divine presence do for me? Uh, why isn't it here when I don't experience it? What happened? What did I do wrong? All of these ways are, um, the, the orientation has a kind of implied way of really what can I get from life? What can I get from this experience? And that has its place, it has its time, but I'm saying with this doorway into presence that, that there's a way and manner of how we enter the moment, the attitude with which we use to enter uh, our experience in itself will determine our experience of presence, our experience of ourselves, our experience of life in a deep and full way. And really what I'm doing is I'm inviting you to find your way, your unique approach, right? So for me, it's this, it's this kind of slow down pace. It has to do with the manner with which my consciousness touches the moment right and and when i slow down enough like that and i really allow myself not only to feel the presence of the whole moment and of what's happening around me but i'm also feeling the manner with which i'm coming into anything right so i'm kind of feeling into the quality and that's it the quality of my consciousness the quality of my being the quality of um myself right and and to reflect on that and to feel the quality the the manner with which i am approaching the moment can begin to teach us that we can kind of make these subtle shifts and adjustments in our approach and that in itself will show us and reveal to us this this presence that is always available and so how is humility related to this and why am I bringing this up uh, regarding humility? Well, in order to come in contact with presence, with our divine nature, I'm suggesting that the manner of how we come into this space will actually allow for this divine presence to be revealed or not, right? And so part of that whole process has to do with listening, right? We, we really, as we enter the moment, as we enter our experience, what we're doing is we're actually learning to listen to the entire field of our experience, right? So below the interpretive mind, there's almost an energetic level that's happening below the surface, right? 
So we're attuning to that, we're sinking into that, we're dropping into that, and we're beginning to listen with the entirety of our bodies and beings and minds and hearts and bellies. We're beginning to listen to all that fully. And that act of listening in itself will begin to guide us, right? So if we go into it in the, in the sense of, I'm gonna listen to something and I'm looking for something to listen to, right? So you're kind of looking for a guidance, you're looking for an answer, you're looking to find something that can be the direction. That's a bit missing the point, right? So the listening in itself is the guidance. Right? When we come into anything and we use our entire body and being to listen to anything, to anything in life, right? it could be at our jobs, it could be construction work, it could be whatever it is that we're doing, if we're actually engaged and fully present, it's as if the moment itself and our contact with it in such a full way has all the wisdom and instruction that we need, that then we automatically are called to move in that direction, right? And so we're making listening more important than uh, a direction or a goal or a movement somewhere, right? This process of listening is the process of life, of consciousness, of spirit, of the divine presence, making us humble. We generally take humility to be a kind of uh, self-deprecation, right? So uh, somebody may compliment us and then we kind of deny it. Oh, no, I'm okay, I'm fine, uh, that's not me, or compliment them back really quickly because to stand in the fire and the light of that compliment or whatever the other person is seeing us as, it's almost like uncomfortable in our bodies, right? We feel that discomfort and so we throw it back, right? And, and we call this humility. This is not at all what I mean by the word humility. Humility is actually the contrary. It's the capacity to stand truly in our light, to stand in our power, to stand in what we know is true in a sturdy and settled way. And yet, not boastful, not arrogant, right? Because that's the other part. So the opposite of humility in our culture is usually this, this word arrogance, right? We're full of ourselves and we know it all and we're kind of puffed up, right? So, so there's a sense that we're full of ourselves or puffed up, but it feels like the substance is almost like a balloon. It's airy, right? Almost like you could take anything, like a little pin and pop that balloon and all of a sudden the person that was arrogant and full of themselves will be really hurt, right? So, so that's that kind of arrogance which, which generally in our culture we kind of teeter between one and the other. So either, you know, we're humble and we're self-deprecating and oh, you know, I don't need, I don't need anything from anybody. I'm, I'm okay and, you know, and that whole thing or we go into arrogance and we're all puffed up, which actually ends up being the same thing. It actually ends up being the same state. So that, that version of humility really has a kind of deep-seated insecurity in it, right? And that arrogance has that same deep-seated insecurity. So from that insecurity, these are two ways, two ways that the mind, the egoic consciousness, begins to find uh, ways to manage that insecurity. And so when I'm speaking about humility, in a way, it's the capacity to enter the insecurity willingly, right? So the humility is, is that which is willing to see and experience whatever is given it to experience any given moment, right? So one of these principles of coming deep in contact with 
divine presence, with our presence, with our essential nature has to do with listening, right? So as we listen deeply to what is being called for in the moment, and, and we're listening with our whole bodies, hearts, minds, bellies, everything at our disposal, what we may come in contact with, which is almost a guarantee, will come in contact with these obstructions, will come in contact with these hurts, these pains, these insecurities. Right? So actually, the fundamental core of the egoic structure is insecurity itself. The ego itself is a construction in the mind out of an insecurity, right? Out of not knowing how to bear the difficulty of that insecurity, not knowing how to bear the, the feeling of deficiency or absence of, of something real. Right? That's what insecurity, not secure in ourselves. Right? So humility is really about being willing and able and open to being taken by our capacity of listening, by our way and manner with which we enter any given moment, and, and the willingness to come in contact with these difficult places. Right? And so really what I'm saying is that the whole body, the whole system, the whole organism, the whole mind has different shapes and things inside of it that we don't know how to feel. Right? What I mean by shapes is like any given contraction in your body, any given difficulty in your body has a kind of shape. It has a kind of density. It has a kind of quality inside it. It has a kind of movement or lack of movement. It could be numbness. It could be um, agitation. It could be friction. It could be heat. It could be uh, contraction. It could be density. It could be heaviness, right? We even use these terms like, I feel really heavy. I feel weighted, right? Usually when you feel really exhausted it's like it's there's a kind of weight in consciousness there's a kind of weight that you feel in your whole body that's what i mean by shape all these things that are difficult for us to feel through have a kind of shape have a kind of form right so in our willingness to enter these forms willingly to settle into them and open without a secondary overlay about what it means, what it means, what I am, what it means about my life, what it means about the whole thing, what it means about God, what it means about somebody else, right? Because that's the tendency, what we usually do is we feel these things or barely feel them. We barely kind of scratch the surface of that shape, right? It's almost like we come in contact with it and then we hear kind of the inside information that it tells us and its perception on the world. And we almost like right away, we come to a conclusion. We come to an interpretation. We come to an idea about what it means about ourselves or the world. And then we are actually not even feeling it anymore. We just barely touch that shape. We barely touch that friction, that contraction. And we go straight into our minds and then we interpret it. Then we, we're removed from the actual experience. Right? But if we begin to learn how to listen to the shape that is there for us to feel or listen to, which that means just whatever shape is in the moment for us to feel, whatever contraction, whatever thing that we're feeling, whatever thing that is troubling us. As we sink down and feel into that shape, we have a kind of acceptance and allowance for whatever it is that is there, that it can begin to open itself to us. And here is humility. Here is this process of being made humble. So in this way, being humble means that 
it's the process of coming to our direct and immediate experience of our lives, coming to the truth of what is actually so in the totality of our experience. And that by doing so, coming into the fullness of it, not denying, rejecting, running away, but just settling easefully, humbly, openly to whatever shape that it is given us to feel at this given moment, that in doing so, that that very process, that us entering into that very difficult shape, right, just by entering that, that that has the actual transformative power, the heat, the friction, the intensity, the challenge to actually transform us and what we believe ourselves to be. Because a lot of the times, a lot of the things that we think we are, we are not. Many of them are actually unconscious. They're just running the show. And then there's these kind of surface ideas, ideologies, dogmas about ourselves and the world that are on top of these insecurities and difficult emotions and things that we don't know how to digest. So I'm inviting, I'm welcoming you to see that if you just settle into whatever shape the moment is taking, whatever difficulty, whatever challenge, whatever hurt, and you go right inside of that. You open and you soften gently, gently, so you don't flood yourself. You don't just plunge yourself and you keep pushing your way through it. That's not it either. That's kind of inauthentic either, right? Because inside of that, you have a kind of projected goal or idea about where you want to get. But that idea of where you want to get is actually based out of and tied to what you believe you are. So it's actually the falsehood of what you believe you are projecting a future goal about where it thinks that it needs to go, which has nothing to do with reality, right? I'm almost inviting you to just open to the possibility of humility by way of entering wholeheartedly your experience as it is now. Whatever contraction, whatever delusion, whatever thing that may be going on, almost drop down into the energetic level of it and just sink and begin to listen. This process of listening is the process of being made humble. We're going right directly into our experience and we're allowing whatever that experience may be by encountering it honestly, authentically, sincerely to develop and unfold and teach us on its own what we are. Because any given moment, every given moment that we're finding something that's troubling us and we come in contact with it in a sincere way, we enter it willingly. We begin to listen to it wholeheartedly. That that in itself is the transformative agent. That itself has the transformative power. And it humbles us because it shows us that we are not what we think we are. And that what we think we are is continually being tilled back into the ground of being, the ground of consciousness being kind of swallowed back into this ground of consciousness and a new emergence of something new and alive comes to the foreground that shows us what we are that has nothing to do with definition, has nothing to do with me having beautiful words to describe to you what it is I am, but rather is a alive, embodied, somatic, knowing, hum, vibration, presence, divine presence of who and what we are. Right? And this really has to do with embodiment. And I want to say that why another reason why this is the humbling process, why this has to do with humility is because we do this journey a thousand times over. And then when we've come to this profound realization or hundreds of realizations, hundreds of little awakenings and big ones, that those too are tilled back into this soil of consciousness and something new is birthed that is not self-conscious whatsoever. 
that is not self-obsessive, that is not going back into itself and looking back into the mirror. Who am I and what am I and what are they going to think and what are they going to say and what are they going to do and what do I think and all that jazz. None of that becomes relevant. And even if that's there, this presence of consciousness is able to see through it, is able to just, just, oh, here's that, here's that again. It means nothing. It has no importance. It has no value. And so in that way, we're made humble. And humility, it's, it's really a, a, a pretty mature uh, quality, a quality of being. It, it requires so much strength and depth and even power. And so humility is this, is this capacity to be in our strength to be in our beauty, to be in our power, to be in our vulnerability simultaneously, to be willing to be taken over by life, to be willing to step onto the fire, the fire of transformation, the fire of life that is life itself, and to be constantly shown new ways, new interpretations, new ideas, new possibilities about what we are and what this is. So humility is about the capacity to stand in one's own power and to be able to walk into the fire no matter what it takes. To step into the fire of life, to step into the fire of the moment and say, yes, I'm willing to see my delusion. I'm willing to stand in my power, but I'm also to see able and willing to see my delusion. So both, our strength, our beauty, our knowing, and a willingness to see what's off, what's not true, what's not the case, where we're deluded. Thanks for joining me today.